All right, in this video, we'll be looking at the areas of weird four-sided shapes. We're going to begin with two of them at the same time, the rhombus and the kite. What makes the one on the left a rhombus is the fact that all four sides are equal in length. What makes the one on the right a kite is the symmetry line running right down the middle there. All right, and what's in common between these two shapes is the fact that they can be cut real nicely into these four right-angled triangles like that. And if you look at that carefully, because those triangles are right angled, if you sort of duplicate them and carefully arrange them, you'll find that these yellow shapes we're starting with are actually exactly half of this rectangle bounding them like so. Okay, so the yellow shapes we started with are actually half the size of the rectangle bounding them like that. And so if we give these rectangles some uh, dimensions like x along the bottom and y going vertical, right, then the area of our original shape must be half of the rectangle, which is half of x, y. Okay, but don't lose track of what x and y are actually measuring. Keep in mind x and y are not side lengths of these shapes. Okay, x and y are actually the lengths of the diagonals in these shapes. So if you look carefully at the x's, they are actually the length of that horizontal diagonal for both of those shapes. And likewise for the y, they are not side lengths, they are lengths of the vertical diagonals of these two shapes. Okay, and so for these special cases of uh, the rhombus and the kite, you, if you know the diagonals, it's half times x times y. I don't normally use this that much um, and but what I want you to see from here also is that if you have any strange shape like this uh, you can often get its area by cutting it up into a bunch of uh, simpler shapes like triangles or rectangles right if you can do that that's also a nice uh, th trick to have under your belt okay all right next one is a trapezium we'll see an example of that right now actually it's a trapezium like that um, and a trapezium is defined by having one pair of parallel sides. We'll call these two A and B for now. It's helpful to have some names for these. And we'll call the distance between them, uh, the height of the trapezium, H. Okay. Now with this trapezium, the way we're going to work out its area is by cutting it up into two triangles, as I just talked about. And if we just for the moment split up these triangles we can see that the area of the green one must be half times base times height, which is half times B times H. While the area of the blue triangle is half times A times H, the base of that being only A. And I might write these two areas a little bit differently. I'll multiply the H into the fraction. So uh, if you look at the green one, I'll call it H on two times B and the blue one H on two times A. Why am I might group it up like that is because the area in total must then be h on 2 multiplied by in total the blue one plus the green one the a plus the b okay writing it like this rather than the two separate triangles is going to be helpful for something we do later okay so writing it like this i know might be a bit weird now but it's going to be quite helpful for something we do further down the track okay so let's put the trapezium back together um, and remember a and b are the two parallel sides. So the blue and the green parallel sides are A and B, and H is the distance between those two parallel sides. Okay, and so if you work out H over two multiplied by the sum of the two parallel sides, that gives you the area of the trapezium. Okay, thanks for watching, see you later.